What's up everyone, in this video I'll show you how to give anything in your Squarespace website a 3D perspective on hover, like this. Okay, let's dive straight into this one. I've got this page open and let's say I want to add some perspective to this image. I'm just using this as an example, but we can do this with buttons or text blocks or whatever we can get the idea of. So if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you'll know that I use this plugin for Chrome that grabs the idea of blocks in Squarespace without having to root through the HTML of the page. If you've never used it before, as always, the link will be below. So I grab the idea of the image by clicking on it, and you'll know it's copied because it says Copied! Exclamation mark. It doesn't really, but it'd actually be quite cool and equally annoying if it did. So now we've got the block ID, we'll mosey on over to the CSS editor and paste it onto a new line. And because we want this effect to trigger as we hover over the image, we'll follow this up with colon hover and a couple of curly brackets. Now at this point we'd usually type out the code, but not today, because in this video I'm going to leave the code we need down in the description. Well, not all of it, but the main bulk of it. So we'll take a copy of this and back over in Squarespace we'll paste it between the curly brackets. Now when we hover over the image we get some perspective shit happening, but there are a few things we can do to customise it and make it look a bit nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this snappy transition. So on a new line, but before the closing brackets, I'll add transition colon, and let's try 0.6 of a second. And then we'll close this line off with a semicolon. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now I want to get rid of the snap when the mouse moves away, so I'll take a copy of the block ID again, and paste it onto a new line after the hover state's closing curly bracket. This time we're not going to put hover after the ID block, just a couple of curly brackets. And then between these we'll put transition like we did above, so transition colon, 0.6s. Now when we hover over the image and move the mouse away, you can see it's a lot smoother transition. Another thing we can do is change the perspective or add another one. So at the moment you can see it's rotating along the x-axis, which is giving it its horizontal flippy out effect. So we can change this x to y to make it flip out vertically. But the cool thing about this effect is that we can add x and y axis at the same time. So let's take a copy of this rotate value and make a space after it. Then we'll paste the value back in and change this to y. Now when we hover over it, it sort of looks like a dog cocking its leg to have a wee. Ok, a couple of more things I need to mention before I wrap this up. First is this perspective 900px. To explain this as easily as possible, basically the lower the number, the more extreme the perspective. So let's click in the CSS editor and come over and hover the image. I'm not clicking on it because I want to see the changes that I make to the CSS in real time. Ok, so let's take this 900px down to say 300. And you can see the effect that it has on the perspective. Likewise, take it up to 1200, and it's a lot less... What's the word I'm looking for? So it's just a case of finding the balance that works for you. I find you can't go wrong with somewhere between 900 and 1200 pixels. Okay, moving on to the degrees of rotation. These can be changed to alter the angle of the block. So let's go something extreme with these, say, 50 on both the X and Y. So 50 and 50. And that gives you an idea of how much control we've got over these. So to flip them in the opposite direction, we'll change these to negative values. So negative 50 and negative 50. And the image will do, to quote Aussie Man Reviews, a flippy, flippy, spinny, flippy spin. Also to quote Aussie Man, whack the like button, then whack the subscribe button if you're enjoying this video. Okay, the last thing, scale. This is what's sort of lifting it when we hover. So this can be changed as well. We can go smaller, so 0.9 and 0.9. I just want to point out as well that you should change these numbers equally, otherwise whatever block you apply this to will skew out of shape. We can also go bigger, so 3 and 3. And that'll make it go, Whoa! F***ing massive! Exclamation mark! Also, if you don't want the scale to be affected, we can just remove the scale value, making sure you don't delete the close and semicolon. So hopefully this video gave you some perspective on... perspective. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. See ya!